Rick, you and everyone else who follows the Lincoln Project knows that I come from a law enforcement family. Yes, you do. My husband is a you black federal officer. You got this. My grandfather served this country for 40 years as a police officer. And I watch that even now. And it's tough. Because I look at these people in, in America who are supposed to be our fellow countrymen. Yeah. Sit here and try to deny what happened to those officers who put their lives on the line to protect those bastards that are sitting here trying to tell them that that didn't happen, that it was tourists. Yep. You know, Abraham Lincoln said, nations do not die from invasion. They die from internal rottenness. What we are seeing happen in this country from our elected officials, from one particular party, from the Republican yep. party that I spent my uh, entire almost adult life working for and fighting for those principles. Principles that I thought meant upholding this constitution, upholding their oaths of office, waving the American flag meant patriotism and proud of your fellow man. And that we share that ideals, the American ideals in this country. But all of that was a lie. And every single one of these Republican lying sons of bitches that are out here trying to tell people that what happened on January 6th was not a violent insurrection, trying to blame it on Nancy Pelosi. Shameful. They are shameful. Officer Fanone yep. banged his hand, hand on the table and said, what a disgrace it is. They were there protecting them regardless of their political affiliation. Yep. Officer Dunn having to endure not only the physical violence of that day, but the racism, the evil hatred that was going on that day to be called a nigger to his face while he was wearing the uniform of this country where he swore an oath and he still went out there and fought. Officer Gunnell, who went home to his wife who didn't know whether he was dead or alive for hours that day and couldn't hug her because of chemicals that these people sprayed on him. He was a war veteran. He said that he felt more unsafe that day than he did in Iraq in a war zone. American people, the American citizens. This is our modern day civil war. This is brother on brother. Those people, those terrorists, as Officer Hodges called them, they were terrorists. They had the audacity to call those brave officers terror, uh, traitors. No, those people were traitors. Donald Trump is a traitor. Kevin McCarthy is a traitor. Elise Stefanik is a traitor. Every single one of those people that sits here and lies to the American people about what happened to that day, you people are the traitors. And they're such cowards that they wouldn't even go to the hearing. They wouldn't even watch it on, on television. They wouldn't even respect these officers and their service enough that day to even watch it and acknowledge it. Kevin McCarthy wouldn't even meet with them. He's such a coward. And what are they doing? Selling their souls for what? For Donald Trump? Donald Trump, a failed reality show con man, loser, sociopath. They're selling out their country and their oaths of office for him. Those officers represent the best of us. And when that officer, when Officer Gunnell wouldn't hug his wife initially, and then she said she begged him not to go back out to the front lines. And he told her, no, I have to. And she said, please don't. He said, no, I have to. And you know why? Because he said that his oath of office was more powerful. His sense of duty was more powerful than a love for his wife and his son. That's what an American patriot looks like. Not like those sons of bitches that were out there talking about fuck the police. Let's kill Nancy Pelosi, hang the vice president. They don't know, that took on yeah, 800 killer. police officers. Those are traitors. They're terrorists and they deserve to be locked up. And you know what those officers also said? They said, please, you guys are our last hope to hold these people accountable. The elected officials and everyone that, that incited this and enabled it. These Republicans have become fascist enablers. They are white supremacist, fascist, authoritarian enablers and they do not deserve to be in office.
this is what we're facing, everyone. And I am heartbroken, heartbroken that we are in a position today where police officers, heroes, have to go there and be subjected to that level of abuse, of disrespect and dishonor. I expected from the yahoos that were out there, okay? But from the elected officials who know better, shame on you, shame on you. Lincoln also said, he said, any nation that doesn't honor its heroes <laughs> will not long endure. Yes. And that's what we are facing right now. Our democracy is in peril. We will not endure if we sit back and allow this scourge, this despicable malignancy of Trumpism to win. Adam Kinzinger said that, th that democracy was saved that day because those guys held the line and that even though they felt abandoned, but they actually won. And he's right, but it was temporary. We have to continue to fight for this because we cannot allow the other side to continue to do what they're doing. Shame on you, every one of them, and shame on every single person who supports this. As an American, if you're not upset by what you saw today, then you're on the wrong side of history. Absolutely. Folks, this is going to be an angry night because we, we've had... So, you know, the, when we put together the emergency broadcast on January 6th, as this was going on, you know, Tara and I just went in live and just started talking to you guys. It's kind of what we're doing tonight because we've all watched today with a growing sense of complete mortification and horror and, and a rededication to the fact that the battle in 2022 is going to be waged by one team that will do anything to take power. They will do anything to gain and take power. It is a terrifying and, 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 and frankly, it should be a motivating prospect. Uh, I know that I sat down today and started remapping what we're doing in 22 in some terms of some of the strategic things in the Senate to start thinking about how we work these problems. Because right now, there is an opportunity for the good guys to make this play. What did you see today? You saw the Republican Party show its true colors. Yep. And those colors are a white fucking hood with eye holes cut out of it, okay? They're defending people who went up and yelled and screamed and attacked Capitol Police and called them the N-word, okay? You're, they're defending that. Those people, Elise Stefanik <laughs> believes in that. She supports those people. She will lie down and die for those people who yell the N-word at cops before she criticizes them because it might make Donald Trump angry. Right, they're upset and about folks, you that, also but they're know. not upset about Gosar and Taylor Greene and, and Mo Brooks and Biggs right. and Matt Gates going out there calling the people who did this, these terror, domestic terrorists who did this, that invaded our capital, that tried to overthrow our government, that tried to murder our vice president. They, they're more upset about those people. They're not upset about them calling them political prisoners. No, they're fucking domestic terrorists that would have killed terrorists. any one of them. That would have killed any one of you know, those and, members of Congress if they'd gotten their hands on them that day. And yet they sit back. McCarthy is upset about, uh, you know, upset about Pelosi and making things up about her responsibility, which she wasn't responsible for security that day. That's a lie. But you've got to be kidding me. Adam Kinzinger and, and, and Liz Cheney are the apostates? What hypocrites. It, it, yep. And, 